Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on building an MMDVM hotspot. So this is a multi-mode digital voice modem or ham radio hotspot. And basically what this does is allows me to use my ICOM with the D-Star digital mode. But since I'm not in range of a D-Star repeater, this thing basically becomes a D-Star repeater. So it communicates with my ham radio over two meters and 70 centimeters, and then utilizes the Raspberry Pi Zero W uh, that is plugged into, which is connected to a wireless network that has a route out to the internet so it allows us to use the internet as a transport path between this and some other d star repeater somewhere else in the world so basically i can use my handheld transceiver to talk to hams all over the world using the internet as a transport path so in addition to icom's d star digital mode this thing supports a ton of other modes like yesu system fusion p25 dmr um, one of my favorites being poxag so this thing can actually transmit poxag pages to my ham radio pager so the kit that i bought from Amazon for about 50 bucks is meant for a Pi Zero W and has an enclosure for that form factor. It's half duplex. Um, you can plug this into any form factor Pi. They also make a larger hat that's capable of doing full duplex, but I didn't really need that and really enjoy the portability of something so small and tiny. So in addition to the $50 hat, I'm going to need my $10 Raspberry Pi Zero W, but I'm into this setup about 60 bucks. So let's jump in and take a look at the build materials. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is we have two sets of header pins here and taking my Pi Zero W, I'm going to attach these to the two ends of the GPIO pins with the long pins pointed up and the Raspberry Pi on the top of it pointed up um, so that we can plug the hat into the top of it. So let's go ahead and get these pins soldered in. All right, now that we have our header pins soldered on to the Pi Zero W, we're gonna open up the case. And now in the bottom of the case, I'm gonna mount the Raspberry Pi, uh, paying close attention to these two slots here to line those up properly so that we can fit our micro SD card through there. And you can see this little expansion port hanging through here. Now what I'm gonna do is use the two tiny screws that came in and bolt the Raspberry Pi next to the header pins that I just soldered on to the bottom of the case. All right, next I'm gonna take the Pi hat and on the sides opposite of where the header sockets are, I'm going to put the two spacers and I'm gonna drive the two long screws through them just to hold them in place and then I'm gonna connect the two together. All right, now we can see that our Pi Zero W is all mounted in there. We've got our hat put in and connected and now we'll put the case back together. But before we do that, we're going to take the cover off of the screen. All right, now we can see we've got our MMDVM hotspot all built out. So now we'll jump over to the computer and set up the micro SD card. All right, now to build our image, we're just gonna go to pystar.uk in a browser. I'm gonna go over here to downloads and click download PyStar, and I'm gonna pull down the latest RPy version. All right, now that that's done downloading, we'll go ahead and open it up to unzip it. And now inside of this folder, we can see we've got an IMG file. So I'm going to go ahead and use Raspberry Pi Imager to write that IMG to a micro SD card. All right, now I'm just going to insert that micro SD card into the Pi Star here, making sure to get it into the little slot there. It goes in nice and flush with the case. And the next thing I'm gonna do is apply power to the power USB socket. That's the outermost one. Uh, you can apply it to either. This one is designated as power. This is power plus data. We don't need any data. So I'm just gonna use a USB battery and plug power into this socket, get it booted up, and we'll jump back over to the computer. All right, so now that the Pi Star is all powered on and booted up, and that took a little while because it has to do all of its initialization, it reboots. So if you're not sure if it's working right, you can always plug a monitor into the HDMI socket. But once it's all finalized and booted, what we'll see is that it throws up an access point called Pi Star Setup. So we'll go ahead and connect to that. And once we're connected, we should be able to get to it by going to 192.168.50.1. And we can see it's up and running. So we'll go to the configuration tab. And down here at the bottom, the first thing we're going to configure is the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to click on configure Wi-Fi and I'll do scan for networks. Now, the interesting thing is I'm going to connect it to a network in my ham shack here, but I could also connect it to a wireless access point on my phone as a hotspot, which makes this completely mobile, completely battery powered. So I'll be able to take this with me anywhere I go, operate all the digital modes so long as I'm within a cellular uh, coverage area, which is really neat. But for now, I'm just going to connect to this network. I'm going to put in my pre-shared key here and I'm going to 
change my country code to US. And now I'm gonna hit save and connect. And from my experience, what happens is it saves it, but it will not actually connect no matter what you do. The only way I found to actually force it to connect is to power cycle the Pi Star. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and we'll be back in a minute. All right, so full disclosure, that took a few tries. I actually had to power cycle it a few times, go back into the Wi-Fi settings, you know, connecting through the Pi Star access point and resetting the, the wireless interface. You just have to play with it until you get it working. It, it's There seems to be no rhyme or reason to when it starts working, but as soon as it's configured well enough, it, it works from there on out. So at this point, it has connected to my home network and I've logged into my router and figured out that it received DHCP address of 192.168. 1105, which I've now connected to. And now it's prompting for authentication. So the username is going to be pi star, and the password is raspberry, all lowercase. And now we can see we're uh, logged into the admin interface here. So a couple things you're going to want to do is change out your node call sign for your actual FCC call sign. You're going to want to note that it's operating on 438800. So that's what you're going to want to tune your radio to so that your radio and your Pi Star can communicate with each other. Uh, latitude and longitude, you're going to want to put in your own location along with your own city, your country. Um, and a URL. Um, I'm going to switch from Euro to North America, um, Europe, London to America, Phoenix for myself. Um, and I'm going to do English US instead of UK. And so I will apply those changes. And so I had to navigate away from that page, you know, click through some of this other stuff and come back to configuration to get it to expose the MMDVM host configuration settings. So now down here, uh, the display type that I'm going to be using is the OLED type three. That's what came on the hat. And so I'll go ahead and apply that change. And then down here on our radio modem type, I'm going to pick the one that came on the documentation with my hat. It's uh, this Raspberry Pi hat here. And I'm gonna change that node type to public. And so I'll go ahead and apply those changes. And again, I'll just switch off back to the dashboard here and come back to the configuration here. And we can see that it didn't take, so it doesn't like it when you change uh, stuff in different boxes more than once. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this again. I'm gonna do the Raspberry Pi hat and hit apply changes. And now we can see that it's saved our modem in here. So I will try again with the OLED type three display and hit apply changes. Then I'll navigate off this page and come back and make sure it's still there. All right, so it looks like it really wanted me to fill out the rest of this information. So I went ahead and filled it out. Um, please use your own, don't use mine. But we can see the uh, modem type here has uh, kept. So everything should be configured and we should be able to start enabling these different digital modes. Uh, each one of these is gonna require some configuration uh, and some registration. So I'll be covering these in separate videos. All right, so at this point, we should have a fully assembled, fully operational Pi Star that can be used uh, with our Wi Fi network in our ham shack or with a cellular hotspot to give you connection from anywhere in the world where you have an uplink to the internet. In the next set of videos, I uh, will walk you guys through how to register and configure all the different digital modes so you can get up and running with making contacts with people all over the world from anywhere where you have an internet signal. So, as always, stay tuned and thanks for watching.